Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Denny Rocks. In today's lesson, I'm going to respond to two viewer requests. One viewer asked for my help in calculating a date formula that was nine months after the starting date for a project. A second viewer asked for my help in being able to copy and paste specific date formatting. Now, I love responding to viewer requests, to client requests, so send me an email, Danny at the company rocks, and let me see how I can help you. All right, let's take a look at the first request. We have a beginning date for the report, and my viewer asked for my help in having a date function that would calculate an ending date nine months after the starting date. The second viewer asked for my help in copying and pasting dates that are in a variety of formats and paste them using a very specific format, a four-character year, two-character month, and a two-character date. All right, let's start with the first challenge. Over here, the first viewer said, here's my starting date for a project. And I've watched your YouTube videos, I've watched your videos on your website, and I kind of understand how to use the date function, but I'm getting a formula error. Now, this is common. So over here, we'll use the date function. And one of the common errors, and I use Control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. You know, it seems self-explanatory that what you would do is point to a cell that contains a year, point to that same cell, and extract the month, point to the same cell that contains the date, and expect to get a result. I guarantee you we're going to get an error. There you go. Told you so. So in this case, what we have to do is inside the date function for each of the arguments, we insert the year function, the month function, and the day function. All right, let me illustrate. Equals date, and again, I'm going to use the function autocomplete with the tab in Excel 2007, Excel 2010, and then Control A. So for the year, rather than just pointing to the cell that contains a month, date, and year, we want to use the year function here. So I'm going to say year left parentheses and now extract the year from that cell. Now remember for the month what our customer wants is she wants a month that is nine months after the starting date. So here's our starting date right parentheses plus nine to add nine months and then for the day what she wants is she wants to use the day function and in the case of this, oh, I see that I made a mistake up here, month without that. There you go. And again, this is another reason I like to use this function arguments dialog box. There you go. And now when I click OK, there you go. So nine months after the starting date. Now, the problem that my customer had is that when she said I copied it down and everything worked out great when I had a beginning date, but nothing should have appeared over here. I have nothing in there. So what we have to do over here is we have to insert an if function. So the if function has three different arguments. The first argument is the logical test. So what we're going to say as the logical test is say if this cell is equal to zero. In other words, there's nothing in there. So the logical test, then the value of true, what we want to have is we want to show nothing. So a way that we show nothing is double quotation mark, space bar, double quotation mark, and then put a comma in, and then the value of false will be our original calculation. So now when I click, OK, oh, I forgot to put a concluding uh, uh, right parentheses over here. So what I need to do is put one more right parentheses over there to close off the if function. Common mistake. So now, watch what happens when we copy this down. If the logical test is that this cell is blank, it equals to zero, then the logical test is to return a space bar inside a double quotation mark. If there is a value, then make the computation. All right, so that was solved. Now let's come over here and take a look at our second viewer request. The viewer has very specific requirements. He wants to have the dates in this format. Four character year, hyphen, two character month, hyphen, two character date. 
So here's our normal short date format. Notice over here that I have a variety of formats. In each case, however I decide to format it, what I show is I show over here a date that Excel can understand and then choose however I wish to format. The important point to understand over here is that each of these dates aligns to the right. So it actually is a number, which we can see when we use the uh, formula view, control tilde. So now when I use the control tilde, what I see is that Excel is actually storing a serial number. So each date is a serial number. How many days is the current date or whatever date I put in there removed from the day when Excel began counting time on January 1st in the year uh, 1900. So now when I click OK, or control tilde to bring this back, what I want to be able to do is first, before I can copy these cells and have them come into the specific format, I want to make sure that I format those cells. So I'll make a selection down here and I'll right mouse click and I want to say format the cells. Rather than choosing a date, what I want to do is come down here and make a custom date. So in this case, the custom date will be four characters for the year, Y, 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 hyphen, two characters for the month, hyphen, two characters for the day, and now click OK. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to highlight the cells that we want to copy. I'll use Control C to place them to the clipboard. And then over here, I'll right mouse click and say paste. Now, what I want to do is I want to come down here and use the paste options. In this case, what I want to do is I want to match the destination formatting. Remember how we set up that format ahead of time? So now we're matching that destination format, and it will work every time. Now, one kind of gotcha is that we can also, let's say I had saved these uh, cells over here and saved them as a text file or saved them to the notepad. And now I want to come back and I want to import them uh, from a text file. So if I come over here to the data tab on the ribbon and I come over here and I say import from another source, I'm sorry, from a text, and then highlight where I have that information. So I have this text file over here and now follow the wizard, click next, and I'm going to use the tab as the delimiter and there I can see a preview of the information. Now watch what's going to happen when I bring these in into cell A1. You see, some of the cells align to the right of the cell. They're a number. I can work with them. Over here, this is a text value. So over here, regardless of how it's formatted, it is stored as a number. Over here, regardless of how I have it set up, it's, it's text, and I can't do anything with it. So you see, in this case, what my viewer was saying is that primarily he does copy and paste rather than importing. So that really works out well. All right, now, just to conclude this lesson, what I would like to add for my first viewer with a project is to become comfortable with two different functions. Over here, we're going to use the network days function, and over here, we're going to use the workday function. Now, in Excel 2007, these are automatically activated. They are part of the analysis tool pack. So if you're using Excel 2003 or earlier, what you want to do is you're going to go to the uh, Tools menu and you're going to go to Add-in. So in this case, what you want to do is the add-in that you want to have is going to be an Excel add-in and it's going to be this Analysis Tool Pack. So you'll want to make sure that the Analysis Tool Pack is activated so they can use the Network Days and the Work Days. So let's see how Network Days works. In this case, and again, I'm going to bring up the Function Arguments dialog box. So our starting date over here and then the ending date. What Network Days does, it automatically excludes Saturday and Sunday. Optionally, and you notice that this is an optional argument because it's not bold, I can select a date of holiday or a, a series of holidays. 
So in this case, I have the 2011 federal government holidays. I'll select this, and what I'll want to do is I'll want to make this an absolute cell reference. So I'll use the F4 keyboard shortcut to freeze the columns and the rows and click OK. So now it's going to tell me the number of days that are worked excluding uh, weekends and excluding the holidays will be that it will be 23 work days between the start date and the end date. If I change this to another date, let's say uh, July the 5th, so it will bring into effect several other holidays. Now you'll see that I get that result over here. Now on the work date, what we have over here in this function is that we have a start date we put in the cell reference to the number of days that we're actually going to work and then optionally we can refer to a series of uh, holidays over here and again I'm going to use the F4 keyboard shortcut to freeze that range click OK and there you go and again if I were to change this let's say I wanted to make it 90 days so a start date over here of January the 2nd with the workday function that I've used, excluding Saturdays and Sundays, and then also excluding those federal holidays, this is when the work will complete. So Network Days actually calculates the number of days in between a start date and an end date, optionally including a series of holidays. So it excludes Saturdays and Sundays, and then optionally holidays. The workday function is again a start date, the number of days that you estimate that the project will take working on it, exclude Saturday and Sunday, and then optionally exclude the holidays over there. So there you've learned how to use date functions and date formatting to get the correct result in Excel. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.